Biotech Adventures, and today we're discussing why the only thing we're going to have to fear is AI. Now, I thought another title for this could have been the only thing we have to fear is ourselves, because if you think of how we react to China and Russia and cyberspace, I actually feel like we are going to react as a nation to our tech companies who are enabling AI to them in a much worse way. We're going to be much more worried in the future on what the big tech companies are doing with our data than with, with what China and Russia might be doing when they steal our data. If you look at the evidence for this, when ChatGPT came out, it was really popular, but very quickly, most corporate general counsels and IT people rushed to put up a firewall or a proxy between people who could use the internet and what they could send to GP, ChatGPT. People did not want corporate secrets, corporate recipes, corporate, corporate uh, trade secrets to be sent to a potential adversary. Now, Microsoft doesn't compete with everybody, but everything you send to OpenAI kind of goes to Microsoft and pretty much Google the same, the same thing. Now, there's lots of terms and conditions that say they won't do that. But if we've seen anything in cybersecurity, we've seen like the best intentions go eventually the hackers find a way around it. So what's going to happen if you have all this great data in one place? The hackers are going to go after it. It's going to get sloppy someday. It's going to get stolen someday. I mean, recording this in October of 2023, we just had MGM get hacked through their help desk. We just had 23andMe steal 100 million worth of DNA of, of, uh, of different types of folks. Now, they probably don't have the same resources that Microsoft and Google does. But if you think about all the different SaaS apps that we have, if they all become AI enabled and that our data is used to constantly train those AIs, then we're constantly going to be giving our deepest and most darkest you know, data secrets, if you will, to companies who don't have the resources to really defend them from hackers, nation states, and potentially corporate espionage people who want to get access to that data. So I predict there's going to be a few things that are going to happen here. Uh, the first thing is that corporations are going to start to run their own on-premise data documents, collaboration, chat, and email stuff. It's not going to be like it is today where we have Slack and G Suite and O365. Organizations are going to run internal versions of all that with no connections to the internet. Are we still going to have Slack? Are we still going to have Office 365 Teams and so on? Absolutely. It's going to be on a segmented system. It's going to be isolated. And it's not going to have an internal connection to that stuff. And if it does have a connection, it'll go through something like a, an NSA-style guard, which has type enforcement data and only allows certain types of traffic and applications through it. Um, the second thing that's going to happen for corporations is they are going to get really, really deep into the data la level data labeling. Now, if you come out of the DoD, everybody understands top secret, secret, classified, and top secret, compartmented, and whatnot. But when we get into the commercial sector, we kind of lose the distinction of what is sensitive, what is sensitive, what is classified, and, and so on. But basically, when organizations get the religion of labeling the data, understanding what are the compliance regulations around it, understanding what's the access control to it, understanding what systems it's on, cybersecurity actually becomes a lot easier. But if you label all that data, you can then protect all the data and you can actually build up policies and procedures. It's a lot easier to do things than just defending all email or defending all users at the same at the same time. It's one of the biggest things that's hard to do for an organization is to understand where their crown jewels really, really are. Now, if you've got strong data level, let, I can't say data labeling. If you have strong data labeling and you have strong knowledge of where these systems are, then you actually still can embrace the cloud, but it's going to take really good, strong encryption where you bring your own keys. It's going to take use of new technologies such as uh, synthetic data where you use your own AI to create similar testable data, but it's not your actual data. And you can even do things like file sharding where you're storing the data on cloud systems in an elastic sort of manner, but the data is not present in a way that can be taken by an adversary. And of course, if you have all this data, you can probably put timers on it. How long do I need to keep it? And so on. These are the kind of things people want to do, but they haven't been inspired to do so, even in the face of 
Chinese APT and Russian malware and ransomware and that sort of thing. AI is going to actually force us to have to grapple with that. So this is going to seem like a really out of the ordinary type of opinion, but I believe the more we have this concentration of data with our cloud providers, even though they're doing a great job, I think the more people get hacked and the more evidence is that some of that data is going to be discoverable, even through mistake, big corporations are going to start moving back. The migration that we've seen over the last 10 years of the cloud is probably going to halt and go back. Now, maybe it's not going to be like that. It'll be a hybrid, but I do believe this is a concern that I'm seeing with organizations right now. It's a trend that I think is going to continue. What do you think? Let me know on LinkedIn. Make a comment on this YouTube video. I'm Ron Goulet. If you want to see more videos like this, let me know. Connect with me on LinkedIn. Subscribe to this channel. I hope you have a great day.